Solid chaining can also be used when defining the machining areas of the 2D dynamic milling toolpath. This video will demonstrate chaining while in the solid chaining mode. In this part, we only have a solid model. There is no wireframe geometry. Wireframe geometry can easily be created from this solid by using the create curves command, but the solid model itself is all that is needed. Launch a new 2D high speed dynamic milling toolpath. Click the selection button for the machining region. Now, switch to the solids chaining mode. There are six selection types for the solid chaining edge, loop, linked, edges, partial loop, face, and from back. For this part, we will first machine the six side steps. Even though the step on the left and the step on the right are at different depths than the other four, all six can be grouped into the same operation if the chain is created at the desired cut depth. With solid chaining, the chain can be created on the bottom face of each pocket. To do this, we first need to select the type of chain we wish to create while also considering the machining strategy that is being used. Thinking back to the wireframe chaining videos, we covered two methods to define a machining area with a side that is open for toolpath entry. One, creating an open chain and use the from outside strategy, and two, create a closed chain that contains an air region as an edge and using the stay inside strategy. Mainly, this is just a matter of personal preference, but keep in mind that if you want to automatically extend the toolpath to stock, the open chaining method needs to be used. This won't be an issue with this part as the defined stock is the same size as the solid. We will demonstrate both methods. First, create the open chains on the bottom edge of the pockets. On the chaining dialog, enable just partial loop. On the model, select the starting edge of the chain. Next, you need to select the face that this chain will fall on. If incorrect face is selected, click the Other Face button. Once the correct face is shown, green check to accept. Finally, select the ending edge of this partial chain. It may be helpful to switch to the wireframe mode to aid in edge selection. Repeat these steps for the remaining pockets. In the operations parameters, again select a 3 quarter end mill. Leave the cut parameters set at the default setting, except change the stock to leave to zero for both walls and floors. On the linking parameters page, check the top of stock is set to absolute zero and depth is set to incremental zero. It is the incremental depth setting that allows the toolpath to cut at the depth the chain is created at. On the toolpath type page, set the machining region strategy to from outside. Click OK and create the operation. The resulting toolpath starts outside of the part, proceeds to the chain depth, and cuts the pocket. Now let's have a look at the other option that is creating a closed chain and adding an air region to fit. First, create a copy of the current operation. Right click and drag it to the red arrow. Release and then choose copy before. To select new geometry, click the geometry tab. Right click in the chain manager window and choose rechain all. On the chaining menu, check that only face is active and then select all six pocket faces. Make note, the face option creates chains on all edges of the selected face. This option may create additional undesirable chains if there are other features on the chosen face. Back on the chaining options menu, we need to define the air regions now. Click the air region selection button. Enable just the edge option. 
select the six open edges of the pockets. Change the machining strategy to stay inside. Click OK and regenerate the operation. The result is the same as the previous operation. There are pros and cons for both methods demonstrated. Using the pocket faces and then selecting an air region in the second toolpath, selection is much faster than creating the partial loops. However, using partial loop to define open chains allows the use of stock extensions. If we enlarge the defined stock by 2 inches on all sides, and then set both operations open chain extension to stock to tangent, only the partial loop operation would adapt the toolpath to suit this new stock size. The air region method would not. There is another method that can be used in this situation which involved setting the defined stock as the machining region. This will be covered in the next video.